Hey everybody, my name's Kalen. I am one half of the producer dudes. Uh, Eric and I decided it'd be a cool idea to maybe walk you guys through some of our uh, workflow. I don't know if I want to say tricks, but things that make our workflow a little bit easier um, with dealing with different audio situations. And uh, I felt like one that would be great for me to share with you is my drum editing techniques within Studio One. Uh, there are other videos out there that cover some of this, but I wanted to make a more concise version about how I go about it. Um, it works well for me, and I've actually gained some extra work on the side of for editing people's drums just because they didn't want to have to deal with it. And they're always happy with my turnaround time and how fast I was able to get it back to them because of this workflow method. So it's uh, helped out financially as a... Uh, I guess editor in this case. So I think this information would be cool for you to know. Um, so here we have studio one. We have a session set up here. I have a section of drums from a session. My good buddy, Eric, actually, who's all, the other producer, dude, his old band, least of these, um, these are some raw drum tracks from that recording session that they conducted. Um, they're pretty decent sounding live drums. I, I like the way they sound. I did just a quick mix just for this. It's nothing great, but something to make them sound like a drum, drum kit. Um, and I'll just dive right in and show you what I want to do. So the whole idea is to get all of these uh, hits the to be online with the timeline perfectly so that they are, you know, played sound. They sound tight, sound together with the band and perfectly on time. Um, so, and I actually edited the drums for the actual album or at least half of the songs. Um, and this method really helped me out a lot then. So what we're going to do is the kick and the snare are the two foundation tracks for, t for, by which every other piece of the drum kit is referencing. So when you think about, uh, and these two tracks are going to be your guides. That's why I have them labeled a different color. Um, and what I mean, guys, I'll get that to that in a second, but essentially you're going to group the tracks together and edit them as if they're one big track that way there's no phase issues. Cause if you try to do that with the, without the tracks grouped, you're going to run into a lot of issues. It'll sound like drums colliding into each other and you do not want that trust me. I've done it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I work with the snare kick in and snare top specifically because they have probably the fastest transient response and attack. And uh, because of that reason, they're going to be the foundation for everything for the drum editing. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to deal with these tracks in separately individually first before we group the entire track. And that's really important to remember. So first we're going to go in here. We're going to right click on the uh, on the track and we're gonna do detect transients and what you'll notice is all these little blue lines show up on the screen right here now what you want to do is you can play with this threshold little uh, slider right here and what this is this um, this does is it allows you to um, adjust the intensity, the intensity of how uh, many transients it's detecting um, or how few. So you can see it kind of going up and going away. And I think I found about 51% was kind of where I wanted to sit. And I think it got all the transients. The main thing you need to make sure is sometimes it's going to pick up uh, s different snare hits in like with mic bleed in a kick track. And as you can see right there, that's this snare hit is bleeding over into the kick track what you want to do is make sure you don't have those detected on the transient and only the actual kick hits. So I would say after you do the transient detection, kind of scan through the track and make sure you have highlighted what you don't want to have highlighted and do what you want to have highlighted. And the way to adjust that is if you want two things, you can hit the number one key and kind of scroll through these secondary options. So when you hit command, they'll pop up. That's what I do. So I'll hit that, and if I need to like remove something or put it back in, I could. I could do it just that easy. Um, also, if you just want to click on this and use it as your primary function, you can do that. I like it as a secondary function, so I can do other things in conjunction with it. So there we go. And kind of just looking through here, 
you know, everything looks to be pretty good. I kind of know where this, the, on these drum tracks, I remember that this threshold around 51 was really, really good uh, to pick up these pretty accurately. So now you just want to do the same thing. And just so you know, whenever you do to detect transients, it does pop up with this audio bin function automatically. But if some, for some reason you're out of that, you always click this guy and it brings you back to this section because you need these options. So what I'll do next is I'll do the same exact thing for the snare track or snare top track. Um, as you can see there, it picked up maybe, you know, picked up that. So let me, which is not a snare hit I want it to pick up. So I'll draw it back. Okay. That went away. So kind of go through here. Okay. Snare hits. Make sure it gets all those. You know, obviously the less mic bleed you have, the better it works out. Let me listen to this thing. Again. Okay. So that's a simple hit. Okay. So all that looks great. It's awesome. So what you want to do now is go through highlight all your tracks and make them a group. So you can either do command G or you can go in, you know, right click group, select your tracks, boom, they're a group. You'll see that reflected up here, group one. Um, so now, uh, and also just side note, you have the option to do sensitive detection with the de transients. I leave it standard cause that seems to work just fine. Um, for most, especially with drums. Uh, now what you want to do is you want to establish your guides and this is super important because like I said, this is what the, the rest of the drum tracks reference in, in, uh, in accordance with the time correction. So it's important that only the kick in a snare top are selected. Everything else is referencing that. Make sure that only those two rest are blank and you're good to go there. Okay. So once you get to this section with action section, you, uh, the audio phase at 10 milliseconds, that's fine. Slice or quantize. The difference here is slice. It's a, it's a slicing function, which is what I'm going to be doing. Um, the quantize is like an audio bin function. The only difference is there is we're editing the audio by slicing it and kind of scooting it over versus the quantize is actual an audio bend, meaning you're at, it's uh, elastic audio. So it's stretching and compressing the audio to fit the grid. Um, some people feel that alters the sound. It doesn't sound quite as good as a slice method. Um, you know, I think it sounds great. It's a great option. Most people wouldn't notice it in a mix at all. Um, but to me, the slice function seems to work, uh, you know, just to be a hundred percent picky with the stuff. I tend to prefer to slice function. Um, and so that's what we're going to stick with. Okay. So you definitely want the autofill selected right here because what that does is whenever, um, it splits the audio, you know, because it's scooting things over to either the left or right, there's gaps and going to be space there that eliminates that issue. And it just fills the space if there's space and if it, it takes it away, if there it doesn't need to be there or overlapping or anything like that merge, I'll leave that blank. If you trust this hundred percent, you can merge it and it'll merge a track uh, for you right then and there. But you know, we're humans. We don't trust machines hundred percent. So I'm, I always check my work and make sure it's hundred percent good to go before I do that. And there's always at least one little glitch somewhere. I'm sure we'll encounter several. Um, so I always leave that so I can go in and manually correct it. But outside of that quantize hundred percent, I want it to be hundred percent on the grid. If you want it to be less than that, you can adjust that accordingly. All right. So let's do, do this hit apply and, uh, I'll zoom kind of where you can see. All right. I'll hit apply and see what happens here. Let's do this. Bam. See all those nicely done cuts for you. That would take hours upon days upon weeks to do. I don't know about that long, but it'll take you a long time to do that otherwise. So it's nice that it does it for you. And look, even in there, it does those 10 millisecond cross fades for you automatically. Imagine that. That's incredible. Man, save so much time. Um, so now what you want to do is you want to go through. A lot of times I'll see issues if a snare, a kick, and a snare hit are really close to each other. Um, sometimes they can flam or have that weird cross phase thing. Uh, I don't know if I can find an example here. Uh, I know there's one somewhere. 
but essentially it's when a kick and a snare land on the same hit, but if the drummer didn't nail it on the head, which is pretty difficult to do, you know, they're going to have some kind of editing weird things going on. Uh, I think this is a good example. I actually hit this pretty cleanly, um, but you kind of have to pick which one you want to go with as far as being a little bit more precise. So usually, I don't know, it depends on the band. Most times I'll lean more the kick direction. So what I might do in this case, uh, I don't know, or if we want to do snare, doesn't matter. I say this leans more towards the snare being on. So let's leave it as it is. So it, that's one area to fix that we got corrected. And again, here's another kind of similar situation. I'll just kind of take that out, drag that over, hit the X to make sure that crossfade over there is good. So on and so forth. So, um, you know, if you're, it's not going to be perfect, but you know, just give you an idea how, notice that was, um, I guess he rushed that kick whenever he performed it. So what you want to do, I'll just take this whole thing, slide it back, make sure, you know, that's the appropriate spacing, kind of bring that where it needs to be, make sure it's right there and see that one spot. Awesome. See that fixed it. So you just have to go through and what I'll do is I'll usually highlight them and just hit arrows arrow right and kind of go through and make sure if there's anything weird. Sometimes if there's again, a kick and a snare hit, sometimes it's better to just eliminate one because you know, you want to feel real. You don't want to be mechanical. So, you know, I want that hit to come through, you know, pretty naturally. Um, so you'll go through and just clean up any problem areas like that and see if, you know, there's going to be glitches and stuff here and there, but for the most part, Studio One takes so much of the legwork out of it from you, uh, for, for you, so that it makes it way easier. And sometimes, side note with tom hits, you know, I, I like to leave the toms usually pretty free, especially if the drummer's good. Um, you know, I don't like to quantize tom hits too much because I think that takes out some of the feet at live and realistic feel of the drummer, makes it too gridded. Um, so usually I'll leave those alone, but some people like to do the same thing. And most times if you want to grid them after the fact, I'll just do it. Like he actually hit it pretty on, you know, like this you know, TJ, the drummer who performed this is pretty awesome. Um, but you know, you'll go in, get that, make sure that's at the crossfade pretty much is, you know, and also if you don't know this, uh, audio slip function, I think it's what it's called. You just hit option command on a Mac. Um, and it'll allow you to kind of, you know, make, hit the boundary, kind of nudge it over. And then, you know, you can hit X on those. See where it's sitting there. Honestly, man. It's pretty freaking on. I don't have to do too much. Yeah. And sometimes simple hits you have to be careful of. So sometimes you need to go in if, if you check like the rooms or overheads and you're like, Oh man, that's pretty freaking close. Maybe bring that bound sliding about the editing boundary over a little bit, just so it lets that breathe and doesn't cut off that initial transient. Um, but honestly, there you go. You know, you got really killer tight sounding drums with, you know, m this is video has been less than 15 minutes. And it's just me talking in between doing this. And, you know, you just have to go through and check your work, which takes a little bit of time. But when you add up the amount of time checking studio one's work versus going in here and hand editing everything, which is the way I used to do it before I knew about this method, it literally took so long. Like it made me miserable. And now it's a fun, easy process. And it's cool to have raw sounding drums, you know, there's no samples. Sound pretty dang good. I mean, there's some spiky symbol frequencies coming in the, 
shell mics because they're not perfectly gated. But again, you get the idea. So again, my name's Kalen Orr. I'm one of the producer dudes. If you like this video, please like it. Like I said, and uh, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a lot more info like this coming out. So I'm stoked to provide it for you guys. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And again, you have a good week. Later.